All righty, folks, we're going about to get started. Um, so first and foremost, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for our first webinar of the year. Um, today's webinar is about how to protect your data from ransomware with uh, with QNAP NAS. And I'm your host today, Eric Oliveros. I'm the marketing manager with the QNAP US team. And I'm joined today by our product manager for the US team, uh, Deval Panara. And today we'll be talking about the headaches of ransomware and what you can do to take preventative measures if you were ever to encounter a ransomware threat. So on the agenda, um, here's what we'll be discussing today. So what is ransomware and how it affects your NAS? How to mitigate vulnerabilities and how to recover your data from a ransomware attack? Uh, we'll also be going over some of QNAP's tools to secure your NAS, uh, followed up by a quick demo with uh, of all these features and we'll wrap it up with the Q&A at the end. So without further ado, let's dive into what is ransomware? So ransomware is a type of malware that affects, um, it, it affects your, your, your computer or your NAS to deny you access uh, of your data until a ransom is paid. If attacked, you usually get a threatening message demanding you to pay a fee or ransom if you ever want to see or access your files again. Uh, plain and simple, it's cyber extortion. <laughs> so um, even once the ransom is paid, there's absolutely no guarantee that your data will ever be recovered again. So your data is pretty much at the mercy of the person extorting you. So where did ransomware come from? The usual suspects of ransom for ransomware attacks are your NAS firmware being out of date, uh, using a weak password such as sequential numbers, the word password, admin, just, you know, folks just want to take the easy way out and, and, and put a password that you remember. Um, and lastly, through open vulnerable ports as well. Uh, malware is typically spread through phishing emails and mostly hidden in emails as attachments. Sometimes they're disguised as uh, safe attachments from trusted contacts who were attacked by malware and are spreading it to you. And those can be a little tricky because they look like an email that uh, you know, a family member or friend is sending to you. Um, and sometimes they're just easily identi identifiable as suspicious. They just look bad and you just know that, uh, that they're no good. So malware can also spread uh, by visiting unsafe uh, or suspicious websites as well. So how do you safeguard your NAS from a ransomware attacks? So first thing to consider is making sure that your firmware is regularly updated. That's the, the first go-to um, when you get a, a, uh, a firmware update, make sure that you, uh, that you either reboot your computer and get started or go ahead and, and, and update your ransomware. Also set strong passwords to make sure that you uh, uh, make sure that you change them periodically as well. So uh, that's one thing you want to you want to keep your eye on. Uh, make sure your data is regularly backed up to a secondary storage device or a public cloud account or to another NAS if if you have the means. Uh, also implement snapshots and make sure that you have them scheduled regularly. Uh, if you take these preventative steps, your odds of recovering your data increase dramatically. And if you were ever to have a ransomware threat. Um, you you could uh, you could recover your data. Uh, there's a better chance of recovering your data. Let's say you do uh, get a, a a ransomware threat at this point. Here is a step by step of what you would need to do. Uh, first thing is install malware remover onto your NAS, uh, which you, you could find in the App Center. So uh, yeah, check out the App Center if you have a QNAP. Check out the App Center and download malware remover. Uh, change your admin password. Um, make sure that your NAS has the most current firmware and also restore your data from snapshot or restore it from your backup and uh, you should be good to go. So if you take these four preventative steps, um, if you ever have an, a, an attack, I mean, there's your, your chances are a lot better of getting your data back. So let's get into what steps you could take to secure your NAS. Um, so QNAP has made it easy for you to mitigate any ransomware threats with the following tools. So first, uh, download the Security Counselor app, uh, which we'll get into in just a bit. Malware Remover app as well, uh, which can both be found. Both of these apps can be found in the App Center. Uh, you, again, utilize uh, Snapshot and also adjust your security settings. Uh, but first, let's dive into the Security Counselor app. So the Security Counselor is a newer app as, that has been available since the release of QTS 4.3.5. Uh, Security Counselor checks for weaknesses and offers recommendations to secure your data against 
multiple uh, attack methods. It consolidates your antivirus and anti-malware software into one dashboard. So it's pretty convenient. You can have both, uh, both of these under one dashboard. You can easily uh, ensure how well your NAS is protected and also allows you to adjust for added protection. So if you need to, uh, it will give you recommendations of what security features or settings you should, uh, you should adjust. Um, you can choose from three default security policies and run regularly uh, regular security checkups. And you can also customize your own security policy as well. So you can see your risk report uh, for any potential threats on your dashboard as well. So, I mean, it's, it's all under one, pretty much all your security threats uh, for your NAS all pop up under one under one dashboard. So with the Security Counselor app, you have the convenience of running a scan for malware or viruses. You can also view your risk report and you can make recommendations, uh, recommended adjustments to heighten the security on your NAS as well. So here's kind of a, uh, just a rundown of the, of the actual Security Counselor, um, the, the dashboard. My bad here, folks. I'm having a little technical difficulty with my, my mouse. <laughs> and here we go. All right. So uh, as most QNAP users know, there are a ton of settings on the NAS that you can configure, but some settings we may ignore, uh, well, we should be probably paying attention to them. For example, your password strength options um, is not, when your password strength options is not enabled or your MySQL password, uh, server password uh, uses the default password, these settings are located in different places. Like you can't keep your eyes on all your password settings uh, unless you go to, to different menus. Um, and we have to set them up one by one. So it can be a bit tedious for some users with the security counselor uh, that helps you to check on these settings all under one place. So again, convenience is the name of the game with the security counselor uh, app. Also with the security counselor, you can utilize Q Firewall, which is a cool new feature, which is a firewall management application for your QNAP device. So with Q Firewall, it lets you control uh, and review connections to your device to protect your NAS against cyber attacks. So it's, uh, it's pretty convenient, uh, recommend you, you check it out. And also with Security Counselor, again, it offers you three different initial security policies. So you have basic, you have intermediate and advanced. Uh, so your NAS will default uh, to basic protection when you log into, when you, uh, when you click on Security uh, Counselor. Um, and you can uh, always choose intermediate or advanced for added protection. There's also a custom security policy uh, feature where you can customize any security rules that fit your needs as well. So it's, again, it's customizable. So um, uh, whatever whatever security feature that you're looking for, you can you can adjust with the, the custom uh, uh, security policy. So the second app that we recommend uh, to mitigate any ransomware threats is using the malware remover app as well. Uh, which allows you to scan the NAS for any malware you may have. You can set up scans to make sure that no malware slips in there undetected. And if it does, uh, it will find it and remove the malware. It's a very good app, highly recommend using it as well. So one cool thing about snapshots um, is that uh, they're stored out of volume and they can't be viewed normally at the system level. So this, is, this not only keeps snapshots from accidental modification, but it also keeps them safe from further ransomware attacks as well. So just to summarize here, some of the security settings uh, and best practices that we recommend, set a strong password, periodically change it. Uh, you can also do uh, multi-factor authentication for added security as well. So if you wanna do that, you have that, you have that option. Always make sure that your firmware is updated. Uh, run scans with Security Counselor and uh, the malware remover regularly. Use HTTPS and change HTTPS uh, default ports as well. Alrighty, so now we're going to get into the demo portion of the webinar, and I'm going to pass it over to Deval. And uh, Deval, take it away. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, so let me prepare my screen. All right. Um... All right, so right, good morning, everybody. My name is Deval. I'm the product manager here at QNAP. Uh, today, um, I'm going to show you some um, some settings and some applications that you can use to you know, first prevent your NAS from being attacked and also, the secondly, to uh, uh, 
uh, to also in case you get attacked uh, you can how, how you can use snapshot to recover data as well so um, let me uh, so hopefully you can uh, share you can see my screen so right now I'm logged into my NAS so the first and the initial thing I'll, I'll do is uh, I'll show you how to protect your NAS from any like potential future malware uh, sorry uh, ransomware attack so the first thing you need to do is uh, first I would recommend to first change all the default ports that you have on the computer on the QNAP all right so uh, so the default ports meaning by on, when you go to control panel general settings we have the default ports of system port maybe change the default is 8080 and full full thing maybe something changes to something like 8090 or 8900 something that is not used default port number for HTTPS maybe use it like uh, maybe something like 444 445 and also if you do have uh, you know if you do have a SSL security certificate uh, installed on the QNAP NAS we also recommend to use this option which is force secure connection or HTTPS only so all your regular connection that uses HTTP will be forced to HTTPS so that is what that is one important settings we recommend to do on the QNAP NAS the other setting that we recommend to do is for uh, network and virtual uh, network and file services, we recommend disabling telnet ports and SSH port as well. So if you do not use these services, then we don't recommend to use um, SSH or telnet services. There are certain applications you may need to have these ports enabled. So, but uh, what you can actually do if you do require for snapshot application, you would need this particular port to be enabled. So in case if you do want to, uh, if you if you if your application does require SSH to be enabled, you can change it to be something other than 22 because um, most of the users of, uh, know that the default port for SSH is 22, so they can uh, automatically do port scanning and IP address, and they can find out that the port 22 is open, and then they can attack using that port. But if you change it to default, then it's harder to get to your NAS. So maybe something like port 30 or whatever it is, so you can change it because, and then when you change it, in case if your box changes to red, that means that port is not available to be used. So like 21 is used for FTP, right? So you can't change it to 21. So um, as long as you have the the box remains like regular, it doesn't change to red. That means it's that port is available to use. So I recommend you use something like 30 or anything that's not default port. So we recommend to use that. The other option, again, is under user settings, we recommend to um, disabling the admin account. So you first, before you disable the admin account, first you have to create an administrative account. So you create an administrative account and give them access to administrative privileges or a user account, and then give them access to all the folder permissions, all the applications, so he has access to everything. And once you have done that, um, log into that account, and then you can, um, you can use um, you can do this edit button and then click on disable this account. So by doing that, because remember, admin account is a root account, a root access to your operating system. So in case, um, so being a root account, if they do get access to the admin account, they can do everything they need to uh, uh, use using, and they can access they can access via SSH as well, and they they can change configuration as well. So if you disable this account, uh, it's it, that's another security step that prevents you from being uh, compromised as well so we recommend doing that as well um, and also uh, setting up a stronger password is also highly recommended so we so that's the reason another setting I'm going to go through is under security um, under, uh, under password policy we recommend to have a stronger password so you, so you don't get so it's not easy to guess your password right so you can also you can uh, uh, so you can add you can also for other users when they create an account we recommend um, so you can now request to them to have uh, certain uh, requirements for the password like having English characters digits special characters as well if you wanted to do that not not repeated characters you can have that as well minimum length as well and also for the users to you can have them to require to change passwords uh, periodically and you can change that you can say 90 days 60 days so they can you can force the users to change their password once a while so they don't keep using the same password and then they, they don't so they don't get compromised so they have to keep the um, uh, require you can have them to require changing passwords as well so that's another protection as well you can do another great feature that we have is IP access protection and account access protection you can use this feature so uh, to have the to automatically have QNAP block uh, users who attempt to log in to um, to your NAS, um, you can change it to forever as well. 
So if they have access to, if they uh, if they're trying to, if they have access to your IP address and they try to log into your NAS and they attempt, they fail attempt within five within a minute, five times within a minute, they'll be blocked forever. Uh, you can change that as well. And I would recommend to use this feature so you, you can automatically block them, and then you can uh, uh, so. And then, so they don't get uh, they don't get access, and their computer is completely blocked to access your NAS. Uh, so they don't keep trying and trying and trying unless they get access to your NAS. So that is another great feature. We recommend to have it for SSH, Tenlet, HTTPS, FTP. You can also do it for local protocol, like Samba, AFP, but those may be used by your local users. So you can enable them, but don't change it to forever because they they'll just get they'll just be blocked forever. You can change it to within five minutes. After five minutes, they'll 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 be able to try again. But again, it's up to you. You can change it to forever as well for Samba and AFP. But remember, those are local access protocols. So there's probably a local user trying to access has just forgotten the password. Now you do get notification every time somebody's trying to access your NAS, and then so you will know and with their IP address information and what username they're trying to use. So in case if the user are trying to access your NAS, you will know which user and uh, what IP address they're trying with. So you can uh, quickly uh, block them as well. Under account access protection, this is for all non-admin accounts. You can block them if Twitter will to access these services um, and they'll just complete, they'll, the QNAP just disables their account and then you can go to privilege and then user to enable that account again. All right, so another, that's another great feature you can have. And then uh, you can also do SSL certification uh, from the QNAP as well. So that's another great feature. So that's a, so this are the security things that we highly recommend you use on your NAS. Uh, so, you know, just a preventive, uh, so it just prevents uh, and just gives you an extra step of security for your NAS uh, as well. Um, the lastly, another feature I would like to go you before I uh, start, uh, with the apps is under a two-factor uh, two authentication is under options and you go to two-step, we recommend just use this particular feature. You can use Google authentication app or an another authenticator app. And then so whenever you're trying to log in, you have to enter that authenticator code before you get access to your NAS. So this is another great feature for you to use. Okay, so I, I would recommend you using that as well. Now, moving on to so the, uh, the first application I recommend uh, I'll demo for you is Security Counselor. So Security Counselor is an application that scans for your NAS for any kind of um, any kind of settings that you have on your NAS, and it'll give you recommendation of changing your uh, your settings so it's more secure on your device. So um, so Security Counselor, when you log into it, the first thing is just an overview of your all your applications. So we have applications like Malware Remover, Antivirus, QU Firewall, which is a new application I'm going to demo next. Um, this is applications that uh, will quickly give you information. Are they enabled, disabled, and are, did, did they do any kind of scanning? And you can view reports directly from here. So that's another overview of all your apps, different apps, security-related apps in a you know, single screen as well. But then you can go on the security checkup. This is where you can actually say, um, this is actually, will tell you what is the status of the most important features. Is your NAS up to date? And it will tell you yes, it is, the status is yes. So, and then it'll just this is a quick information, the quick uh, information about all your device, all your settings of your NAS. So, and in case if there's uh, if there is something that is uh, that is not correctly set, maybe the password is too weak, it will tell you right here that your password is too weak. You can also do uh, scanning as well to do a quick scan of your device as well, um, and making sure. So this will check your. Uh, your, uh, your username password, this will check your FTP services, this will check your uh, uh, TLS versions, uh, TFTP settings, and just this is a quick way to get information about what settings are not correctly set. Um, and uh, so again, this, this gives you quick information and then uh, um, again, you can quickly change these settings as well. And uh, and then when you click here, it goes directly to that particular settings in case if it's not correctly set. Under security policy, you can also change, you can be set to basic security, you can also change it to advanced security policy, and also create a custom security policy. This is where you can actually select what the QNAP wants you to check. So does QNAP want you to check if your is your latest firmware, are the apps updated? Do you want QNAP to check all that settings? You can also check to, um, you can also check other services as well. So this is where, in case if you want 
if you want your QNAP to not check a particular, a particular settings, then it will just disable that particular settings. Uh, so again, so that's where that's, so it will just, let's say for example, if you don't want QNAP to check for latest firmware, because you're not updating it to every, uh, you're waiting it to update it every, so maybe you have new firmware, you're waiting to update it until a month after, but you don't want you know, the security setting keep bugging you about that particular settings. You can just uncheck this box to check for latest firmware and QNAP will just stop notifying you that your firmware is not latest. So, and then, so, and then you can manually update it whenever you like to. So again, this is another security settings. Security advisor is where we, uh, we can subscribe your security emails. So we do uh, release, so if there's any um, new security advisor from our end, um, we, so, uh, you'll get a notification on your email. And then also we can report vulnerabilities uh, in case if you found anything. And so we can always uh, go out and check it as well. So that's the security settings right here. Um, uh, and again, and then the next application I'm gonna show you is uh, QU Firewall. So QU Firewall is a new application we just released that uh, gives you an extra step of, uh, so again, it's a firewall for your NAS itself. So we have three profiles that we have set right now. We have the basic settings, uh, basic firewall, which is which allows access to only regional domains. And then, uh, so only regional domains. If you look at it, uh, so it's only, so it's all the adapters that you have and only for, uh, so whatever you, so when you install the application, you, you're, you're, you select what region you want it to be in. And so when you select this, and uh, so it only allows uh, IP addresses from that regional domain as well. And then again, so this, this is a, a MaxMind application. This is a MaxMind application. So the IP addresses that are, uh, so the IP addresses that we block are through a, a database. So, um, so, the, so the database from GeoLite2, so if that IP address, so when we block an IP address, it's through that database. If that, if that IP address is flagged for a particular region from that database, it's only then we block, so we know that particular IP address is block from that database and then we'll block it from that database. So again, so that's another feature that we added recently. And then uh, uh, the other application would be, uh, so then we have another profile, which is a subnet only. So it includes subnet only, which is only allows access to local network protocols. It's only local access as well and will deny everything from outside. So that's only subnet, uh, includes subnet only. And then, and the restricted access is where it gives you, it allows access to frequently used service protocols or frequently used service ports uh, on the device and uh, also only regional domain as well. So uh, we so we we've marked uh, recently used services like 443, like local access protocol, like HTTPS protocols, HTTP protocols. Uh, so all these services um, and. Uh, so for FTP protocols, we'll, we'll do not, we do not block those protocols. We allow, allow those protocols, but when anything else, we'll be, we'll be blocking it. So that's restricted security. And as well as we also block any regions, we only allow regional, uh, regional IP addresses only. So any, anywhere outside of that regional IP address will be blocked automatically. So that's another, uh, that's another feature as well from, uh, from QU firewall. And you can also add profile here and you can create your own profile if you like to. You can select what applications you want to uh, give access to. Um, you can give the access to allow uh, to allow applications and also IP access protection as well. This is where it, again it will block IP addresses which is not within your region uh, or within uh, with, uh, so, sorry not within your region. Yes, uh, firewall event just gives you information of what is blocked uh, or last recently, and then you can also export these particular events or outside as well. So it will just give you information of what was blocked uh, within the last hour. So that will give you that information. And capture, uh, capture events just gives you, so you can do this, but capture event is a troubleshooting method where you can actually perform a deep packet scan on your, net or on your network. And, uh, it will, and then you will, uh, and you can use that particular information to understand what's been, uh, what's been accessed, your, what's been uh, accessed by a firewall. Okay, so what's been blocked by a firewall or what is not. So you can use the particular uh, packet capture to use that particular, so you can uh, understand what's going on with your network, with, with your NAS or with your QU firewall. Notification center, this is where you can actually use this uh, notification center to uh, give you information about 
uh, notification will send you notification on uh, if there is anything that's been blocked by QU firewall. So that's your QU firewall application. The next application is malware remover. Malware remover is an application that was now uh, uh, as an add-on application, but now as soon as you create a volume, it's now an application that but that is installed by default from QNAP. This is another application that we use. Um, on the QNAP, it's a first a line of protection against malware. So we do release. So this is coming directly from QNAP. So uh, so the the updates for these applications are coming directly from QNAP. So we recommend to make sure that this application is always updated because this is the first line of defense for any kind of malware being detected. So when a QNAP is so let's say if a QNAP detect a, a vulnerability and a malware that was being attacked, we do patch that and we release it for malware remover. So in case if your NAS does have that particular malware, it will remove that particular malware and then we'll release a security advisor on how to close that particular loophole in your QNAP device. So let's say if it's a firmware update, um, we will let you know to, uh, to make sure you update the latest firmware because we do patch uh, most of them vulnerabilities through, but through an app, uh, through, um, through firmware updates. So most of our applications that are uh, released are through update, most, most, most of our patches are through firmware updates only. So we'll let you know what firmware update it is. If there's any settings that we recommend to change, we'll also inform you through that particular email. So make sure you subscribe to a security advisor email. That's where you'll be notified first. Okay, and then, uh, so yeah, this is a basic application. You can just, uh, uh, you can schedule when to scan. So it's by default it's at three in the morning and then uh, it will scan for latest updates and will let you know if there's any latest, or automatically install latest update as well. And then you can just click scan if you like to scan right now. Uh, so that's another application that we have on the QNAP NAS that we recommend to install or now make, make sure you use that, use that particular application. One second. Sorry about that, sir. Sorry about that. Uh, so next uh, application I'm going to install is uh, uh, next uh, feature I'm going to show you is snapshots. So this is where you can actually use. Uh, so in case of a malware, if, if in case if there is any kind of attack that uh, if you already hit by ransomware, this is uh, the snapshot is where you can actually use to recover your data in case if there's any. Uh, kind of attack has, that's happened on your device. So that's another great feature that you can use on the QNAP device. So right now I already have a particular volume that's created. And uh, the first thing you need to do, so first I'm gonna show you the setup and then I'm gonna show you the features of it, right? So first thing, when you, you, you need a storage pool to use snapshots. So the only way you can use snapshot is with storage pool. If you do have a static volume, unfortunately snapshot is not supported through Static volume because static volume doesn't have um, doesn't have a space available to store that because it's a whole volume is the static volume is it's a whole volume that's spanned across your disks right so it can, there's no extra additional space but with storage pool it's creating a block storage on all of your disk and then you can and then you create a particular partition that's your volume partition where that's where you save data but then you can actually reserve some space to for your snapshots so for storage pool we recommend using using 20% of space for snapshot. So you can have enough space available on your QNAP device for for having multiple versions of snapshots, multiple versions as well. So if you can keep, if you wanna keep a single version of snapshot, then you can keep less space, but in case of the, but when you try to, but as and when you keep filling up your main volume, the snapshot space may require more space because Again, it, it does depend upon the space available on your main volume as well. Um, but in case of the space is getting, uh, if the snapshot is not having enough space, it will keep letting you know. So then you can delete some data and then increase the guaranteed pool space. But I would recommend to start with at least 20% and, or 10%, depending upon how many snapshots you wanna keep. Uh, to do that, first you click on the storage, uh, you can click on the storage, uh, storage pool and click on manage. Under manage, you click on action and configure pool guaranteed snapshot space. So this is where you can enable this and you can, as, as, we are, as I mentioned, recommended is 20%. You can also change it as well. You can also click on custom as well and 
and uh, provide an available gigabyte space that you want to keep. So mine is 20%, and then that's where you click. Uh, that's why I have it. And then once you select your recommended space, click on OK, and we'll, it will reserve that particular space for snapshots. So this is my. So dark green is where it's guaranteed snapshot space. You also have how much snapshot has been used, and then your volume space. So I have a volume that's created on that particular storage pool. So that's my volume right here. And uh, so you take a snapshot, you can click, click on snapshot and take a snapshot. That only takes a snapshot when you click on it, but it doesn't schedule it. So, but what we recommend is scheduling snapshot. To schedule a snapshot, you have to click on snapshot manager. Now, when you click on snapshot manager, this is where you can actually schedule snapshots, right? Uh, you can click on schedule snapshot. And then this is where you can actually say when when the QNAP wants you to wants to take a snapshot. You can it could be hourly or it could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly. You can also do retention policy as well. How much so you can do it based on date or time, or you can do it based off a uh, number of snapshots, you can do smart versioning as well. So um so keep again, so you can keep it for one week or you can say no keep it for like last 10 10 um 10 snapshots as well so you can select that as well and um so going back to schedule snapshots give me one second and then you can also enable smart snapshot again this is where the snapshot will will look at your data how much is written how much is not and it will, it will take snapshot based off that and only um, so it, re uh, it reduces the number of snapshots, also reduces the number of uh, the, the CPU usage and RAM usage when taking snapshots as well. So you can do that as well. And uh, once you have done that, you, all your snapshots will be, uh, so all your taken snapshots will be available here. So, so let's say if you, let's going back here under snapshot manager, this is where you can see how many snapshots you have taken. And uh, uh, and also you can this is where you can revert back the volume or uh, you can uh, or you can recover smaller data if you like to so you so to QNAP does give the ability to recover a particular folder or file or you can recover the whole snapshot so you don't need to have um, you don't need to have that much space available so you don't have to revert the whole snapshot this is this snapshot if you do take snapshots this is also another great feature you can do you can use for versioning as well so this you can have multiple versions i have also I have so many snapshots available right i have 24 snapshots yesterday 14 snapshots the day before and so this is kind of versioning for me as well so again snapshot i can use it for version i can take uh, different versions of the snapshot i can recover particular um particular uh data from an older older snapshot I can just recover that. So if you if you miss, let's say somebody mistakenly deleted that particular data, right? So you can click on, you can go back to the snapshot and recover that particular data. Or in case if you, if somebody corrupted a particular file, like a Word document or something like that, a picture file, something by editing a picture file, so it got corrupted. So you can go back in time with your snapshot and recover that particular data uh, just using snapshot. So snapshot is just not for, it's on, it's not only for ransomware protection it's only also protection from like random deletion or maybe corrupted data so you can use snapshot for multiple purposes as well so we can recover data from an older snapshot or you can um, you can restore it to uh, so for restoring a particular data you can just click on it and you can say restore to restore the whole folder so you can replace the original folder or you can replace you can copy that folder to another location as well so if you have more space available you can restore it to another location and um, you can click on restore to and select your new location um, you can also do it in a remote location as well if you have a hybrid mount available you can also do it at a, at a different location or you can do it as, an, as a new shared folder you can create a new shared folder using that particular data or you can just uh, do it at a local location at a different uh, and just select where you want to restore it to so again you don't have to replace that particular data you can actually create another copy of the data so your your data that is currently so let's say if you have a corrupted data right so you can keep the corrupted data for any research purposes or anything that you want to or com for comparison reason too and you can also revert the older snapshot as well this is another great example if you want to compare your 
original data, your data from a few days ago with the current data as well. So if you have some documents that you're editing and you want to uh, refer to the old document that you had edited before, you edited over it, you can use this and recover that original data to another location. And then you can use the current data and then you can also open the, uh, the original data that was copied a few days ago. And then you compare your notes as well. So you can do snapshot for that as well. You can do that as well. You can revert. So, and revert volume snapshot. This is where it will re revert the whole snapshot to that particular date. So this is where, this is where ransomware protection come into play. So if you, let's say if you were, if you were attacked, rans uh, if you were, if you were attacked by ransomware today and all your data is locked, where this is, you can come here under snapshot manager, select, let's say select a day, uh, um, a, a day before or snapshot uh, that was not, that was not affected or a few days before because remember if you if you were attacked by snapshot uh, ransomware maybe you had a, you had a malware that's already been uh, been affected so you want to make sure you take care of that first so you want to make sure you install malware remover run a scan of the QNAP, of your QNAP device and then then you can once your malware has been removed then you can go back in time and then recover few days ago and then you can recover a few snapshots ago and click on revert volume snapshot and it will recover everything that you have uh, it will recover back to the original snapshot so that's another great feature that you can use for a snapshot um, here and then you can clone as well so if you have enough space available you can clone that snapshot uh, on that same storage book you will have two different volumes one is your original volume and your clone snapshot you can also have clone available as well by cloning this you can click on clone it will clone the whole snapshot to if you but you have to make sure you have enough space available in the storage pool okay so that's another great feature as well that you can use with snapshot um, another great feature is snapshot replica okay snapshot replica is where you want to replicate your snapshot to another QNAP device so um, here you can actually replicate to another QNAP device. So if you have another storage pool, you can also replicate to another storage pool on the QNAP device. But again, this is mainly used by users who want to replicate to another QNAP device as as um, as a backup unit. So you can use the other QNAP device as a backup unit. So you can select your destination. So I think I have a destination right here. And um, so that's my another QNAP device. I think right here. Uh, let me log into it. Yes, and that's another device. So I can. So then you have to use. Um, okay. So for snapshot, you have to use admin account. So again, remember my previous, um, previous, uh, uh, previous examples of securing a NAS. So if you're using snapshot, then my two recommendations that that was done before it cannot be available here. So the first recommendation is disabling SSH, right? So I told you to disable SSH if not needed. This is where it's required to have SSH enabled because it, it does create a secure connection, then you cannot disable SSH. But what you can actually do is, my the other recommendation I had was you know, changing that particular port, right? So if I can change the default port. I can say, let's say if I change the default port to 30 on the other NAS for SSH, so in the QNAP, this is my second QNAP, this, this is where it can be replicated to, right? Um, so I can change the default to port to be 30 and apply that right here. And I can change, I can say, use deep, instead of using the default port, use port 30. I will use port 30. So that's, that you can do. You can change the default port. The, the other recommendation I had was disabling admin account. That's what you cannot do if you're going to be using snapshot replication. You cannot disable uh, admin account. So you have to keep that enabled. So at that particular point, you want to make sure your admin password is very strong, right? You have, make sure you have, um, Make sure you have at least eight characters. Make sure you have special character, uh, special characters, uh, numbers, words, everything that you can do to make sure it's a very secure password. So you can use that right here. So once you change it and then you click on test, it's going to test to make sure that it's available, everything's correct. Um, I don't have enough sp sufficient space. So unfortunately, I don't have enough su sufficient space available on that particular snapshot, on on that particular destination. Now. I'm going to talk about requirements for destination, right? So the requirement for destination is it needs to have a storage pool. So make sure it has a storage pool 
on the main on the second volume on the second NAS, sorry. So it has to have a storage pool and the second NAS and has to have at least the space available for that to get the whole snapshot. So it's going to replicate all of the data actually. The initial snapshot is going to replicate the whole snapshot. So it has, so let's say for your example, if you go back right here, and look, let my uh, snapshot, so my volume is 385. 0.91 gigabytes, right? It needs to have, uh, it needs to have at least 385 gigabyte of space. I think I have a volume, I have a snapshot right here. Uh, I'm gonna delete that. So I, it wasn't. Uh, so yeah, there's no snapshot, but it does. It does. It did reserve that particular space. So I'm gonna reserve, remove that. So I need to have at least in my storage pool. I need to have at least. Um, Unallocated space at least 285 gigabytes. So if I now if I test it, it need it. If I go back to replica right here, create a replication job. Next, enter IP address, password, admin password of the other NAS, port number, test it. I think I it needs to go through successfully. Yeah, so it has enough space available. So it has sufficient space. So the first snapshot will take all of the space. It will the capacity of the volume, it will take the whole capacity, it'll copy that into the into the storage pool of the second volume. So not I'm not saying so so if you have a storage pool, don't create a volume and keep that volume empty because it, it needs to have space available inside the storage pool. So make sure you make sure you don't create a volume. If that particular, if that, if your if your second NAS is just a backup NAS of the main NAS, don't create any volume. Just make sure you have a storage pool and leave it that way. And make sure your storage pool has minimum of what the vol original volume size was, or at least I will give give it more space because if you want more versions, it's gonna take up more space on the second NAS. So the more space available, then again that then it goes back to the same. Uh, rule right you have the you have the 80 percent and then 20 percent extra so whatever uh, so again the similar to the 385 and plus 20 percent more of 385 so that that is when you can get more versions of that snapshot available so if you only give it 385 it's going to give you one snapshot and it will keep replacing that snapshot because it doesn't have enough space but if you do so and if you do have enough space it will give you more versions as well all right, so the initial space, the initial snapshot is going to be hours. It's going to be taking a lot of time, depending upon what kind of uh, what kind of uh, network network you have, right? If you have one gigabit network, it's going to take a long time. But also depends upon the volume size. My volume capacity is only 385 gigabyte. This took about an hour to re replicate to the other NAS. That's only 385 gigabyte because it does block by block replication, right? It's going to block by block replication of that whole 385. That's a long time to go. Now, if I do have, if I do have, um, if I do have a volume that spans across multiple terabytes, that's, that's going to take a long time for the first snapshot. The second, third, fourth, and the snapshot after the first one, it's only block, it's only that change blocks that it replicates. But the first one, it's a whole. The whole volume. So here, you, what you can do is you can actually do connect the NAS directly to the, one of the second port of the NAS if you do have multiple ports. And if specifically if you have a NAS that ha that supports 10 gigabytes, uh, 10 gigabit network connection, you can connect it via 10 gigabit connection and do the initial replication using that direct connection or the 10 gigabit connection. And then you can edit the IP address of the second, uh, after the initial replication, you can edit the IP address. And then the, 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 the ones that are done after, it will just keep updating it. So then, because remember, I told you the, after the second, third, fourth replication jobs are much smaller. Again, it depends upon how much you change on your NAS, but it's gonna be not at, it's not gonna be in the whole volume. It's just the, repli the changed data. So that that's going to be very small. It's, it's going to be very small. So it it can it it can go over your network and should not block it down. The second thing, you, so once you select your IP address settings and everything, you can click on next. You can you can say how much you want to keep. You can keep latest 30 copies of your snapshot, or you can just say I want to just I, I just want five copies of the snapshot. So you can do that as well. Click next. 
Here you can do replication on the schedule. You can select the schedule. You can do daily replication, or you can do hourly replication as well. Uh, as well, um, and then what time you want to start replication job. Now remember, um, replication job. You want to do the replication job. This is another note that I recommend. When you do when you do replication job, you want to do it when no one is using your network because again, this may block down your network when it's transferring data, especially the initial replication job. It's gonna take a lot of data to be transferred across. There is a setting I'm gonna show you where you can actually say, um, use, is you can actually control your network, uh, network bandwidth. But again, um, you wanna do it again. I do recommend using this replication. If you do hourly replication, then you can't change that, right? But if you do daily replication, do a replication job every may, maybe morning at two in the morning or three in the morning when no one is using the network, right? Because and also when no one is using the NAS because it can do a proper replication and it replicates everything that, that was changed on that particular data. The only drawback of that is if you do hit, if you were hit by ransomware, your replicated data is an old in a day older, right? Because remember it doesn't start replication at night until the night of that particular day so that though anything that was changed from two in the morning after until the two so everything that was changed after two in the morning you won't be replicated because that was there was no replication job that ran after uh, until that next day so that's the only drawback when you do 24 hour replication but you can do hourly replication you can do it every hour so so when you do every hour or every few minutes, you at least have data that's been replicated every five minutes. So you don't lose if you if if your if your if your um, application is very important that you can't lose anything, then you want to do every few hours, every few minutes, and then it will do a replication every few minutes. But if your if your application is not that important that you you're okay to lose at least days worth of data because there's nothing that's been changed that's important within that day, you can do it every day as well. So that's another replication. So um, so here you can just say replication job, start replication job on a schedule, or you can say start replication job after taking a local snapshot. So we'll take a local snapshot and then take a, and then start a replication job. Or you can take a replication job on a schedule and then run, uh, so take a new snapshot on a schedule. And so once it takes a schedule, uh, replication, so once it takes, once it does a snapshot, it, it runs the replication job. So you can do that as well. And once you hit next, this is where you can say encrypt transfer. So if you use port 22 it, or the SSH port, it will encrypt the transfer. You can compress the transfer as well. So it doesn't take that much space as well. And this is where you can control your bandwidth as well. And uh, this is where you can say, I don't use more than a few hundred megabytes on your network, right? So, so this is where if you do hourly snapshot, you can control your bandwidth. So when it does an application job, it doesn't block down your network. You can say just only use maybe, it's based off kilobytes. So you can say only like maybe 100 kilobytes uh, of uh, speed or 1000 kilobytes of speed and will only use that much space. And it won't use, um, it won't use, uh, it won't use the whole network space as well. And you can, once you have changed all of that, you can click next and finish. And this is where you can say backup, execute backup immediately. And we'll start the backup job immediately after you run, uh, after you change all the settings, it will start the replication job. So your first replication job is started immediately after you save your settings. So that's another great feature of that particular device. So right here, I have local protection because I've, I haven't done any replication job. So it only says local protection. But once you have finished the replication job, it will say fully full protection. Okay, um, again, snapshot wall is where you're gonna be accessing the snapshot wall right here. So it will show you all the snapshots you have done or you've taken here um, and you can recover data from here as well. So that's your, uh, that's your snap snapshot replication. Um, and that would be it actually. So that is it for the demo today. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to uh, Eric. Awesome, thank you, Deval. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, now we're opening it up to q and I've been uh, trying to answer a few questions as we've gone and uh, Deval will be joining in to answer a few questions. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm just going through all the questions and uh, I'll start answering them. Alrighty, a few folks were asking, 
if um, the webinar will be a recording, <clears throat> excuse me, the webinar recording will be available. Um, yes, it will. We will send you a follow up, uh, a follow up to a follow up email after the webinar, the next couple of days, with the recording of the webinar, with the link to it, so you could um, feel free to share it or um, or do what you will with it. <laughs> but all the information that we discussed today will be, um, we will send you a link with the webinar follow up. Okay, some folks were asking, we we're planning to purchase a TS1635AX. Um, will this NAS contain all of the apps that we are showing today? And uh, yes, um, pretty much all of our NAS models, um, you can you can download the apps, uh, the malware remover app or the security um, the security app as well, and also snapshots. Um, pretty much all of our NAS, our newer NAS models, um, support snapshot as well. So just make sure you have the latest firmware. Can somebody had a question? Is it possible to remotely manage your QNAP NAS? Um, yes, you can, as long as um, you have your MyQNAP Cloud account set up. You can manage. You can pretty much access your NAS anywhere remotely, uh, as long as there's a web connection. If you want to manage your actual NAS. For example, power on, power, uh, I'm sorry, power off, check the health of your NAS, um, manage pretty much all, the, all the, the management features. We also have a mobile app called QManager. Um, so that's a pretty cool little app. You can, um, you can uh, do a lot of cool stuff to your NAS remotely. And also, of course, QFile, you can access your files and manage all your files remotely as well. Oh, all right. Uh, if I have a question here, it says uh, my QNAP clouds will not be connected to the my QNAP NAS will not be connected to the internet. It's only set up for internal use. So what is the best to protect it from local users? The system might be infected with viruses. So, um, so if the users are con so in this scenario, if the users are connected via SMB connection or an AFP connection, uh, then or FTP connection, and they're mapped right onto the computer. Uh, so the QNAP app, the QNAP unfortunately also get infected as well because uh, it, it will allow connections from those users, specific, specific, especially if the users are having read and write access. So in that that scenario, scenario, snapshot is another way to, you know, snapshot is a great way to protect your NAS, right? In case if, uh, if they do get attacked by, uh, by ransomware, you know, it does affect your NAS, you can control the snapshot, you can use snapshot over the volume back to the one the, to the time before. Make sure you make sure, obviously, make sure you have the computer disconnected and then have uh, so and use the source of snapshot to recover your data and revert the snapshot back. So, um, and then you can do that as well right here. Um, the another great feature would be uh, another thing is uh, for, for antivirus, we do have antivirus software available. So if you click on the control panel and then go to um, go to antivirus right here, and then uh, you can there's a free antivirus available. So for in the computer, it's infected with antivirus, uh, I'm sorry, virus, and then you can infect the computer, uh, the the file from the QNAP NAS. You can use this antivirus um, um, available, and then you can enable this, and you can check, uh, you can uh, perform a scan jobs right here. You can say scan job folders. And then hit next, and then you can scan. You can either scan now, or you can set up frequency of scanning every hour, every 24 hours, a daily, weekly. And you can do that and you can prevent your. Uh, and then you can you can use the antivirus to remove all the viruses on the computer. So yeah, that's another great feature that you can use on the QNAP NAS. And this is a free to use application as well. Another another user was asking if those applications are uh, are free to use. Yes, these applications that are free to use available. Uh, uh, 3D use applications available on the QNAP NAS. Another app, another question was: We store large video files. If they're using snapshot, will this create the same file replicas? Meaning, if the files are 15 terabyte, it will create a 15 terabyte snapshot? No, it won't. So the snapshot is not based on the file size. It's based off the change blocks. It doesn't create a 15 terabyte uh, snapshot. It's only one when you change data. It's the blocks of data that was changed will will be replicated on the snapshot. So it won't be 15 terabyte. Uh, it'll, it's just based off the changed data that you have on the device, or deleted data that was that will be that will be replicated stored within the snapshot folder. 
because uh, the way that works is when you delete data because the actual data is never deleted. It's only delete the reference to the main hard drive. So the keynote will copy that reference to the snapshot folder uh, for the reference of that particular original data. So in case you want to restore it, you will restore that particular uh, reference to the original data with the stored within the hard drive. And in case your hard drive gets full, and it wants, and then it will, and and start to override the deleted data. That's when the deleted data will be copied inside the snapshot folder. So that's how the snapshot will work. So only the, only the deleted data which, which is being overwritten is being copied into the snapshot folder. So if your volume is not going to, it's not getting full, the snapshot space won't be used that much. Uh, if the snapshot only config settings, uh, if the snapshot only config settings, what is my original video files are infected? Again, yes. snapshot is not configuration. Actually, okay, this is another great question. The snapshot does not copy configuration file. Remember, so it's only the data user's data. So it's not for replicating the whole NAT. It's only replicating the user's data. So there's no configuration file that's being copied into the snapshot. It's only the configuration, uh, only your video, only your data. So your video files are actually. So if your video files are infected, you can actually use snapshot to recover that particular data in uh, using that. So will the snapshot match also protect ISIS? So we have different uh, ICC uh, snapshots available for ICC. Uh, this is this webinar is only focusing on the volume snapshot, but yes, uh, there is um, an ICC snapshot protection available as well as under storage snapshot. And uh, sorry, it's an ICC in fiber channel. Uh, I don't have an ICC to show you, unfortunately. But yeah, we'll, I will, I'll take a note on this. Maybe, maybe we have a future webinar that goes more detailed into snapshot as well as uh, ICC snapshot as well. So can a snapshot replication be done on another QNAP device or it can go to an external hard drive? It has to go to another QNAP device. Currently it doesn't available for, it's not available for external hard drive because you cannot create a storage pool on an external hard drive. Fortunately, we have another operating system called QUTS Hero that does allow copy uh, copy of snapshot data into uh, an external hard drive. So if you have an app that supports uh, the QTS Hero operating system, which is a ZFS based operating system, you do have the ability to copy that snapshot into that particular into an external hard drive. But for QTS Hero, sorry, for QTS NAS, which is what I'm showing you today, doesn't have the ability to copy into an external hard drive. So you can only copy onto another QNAP device. So another question that we had uh, regarding uh, snapshot as well. So uh, if you wanna, so regarding this, uh, if, wait, let me check. So yeah, do you have to take a full, full volume snapshot or you can only take like a folder snapshot as well? Because um, yeah, that's a great question. So in case if you have a full, so let's say if you wanna, if you have a volume with a lot of folders, right? Not all of them are important. And you just have few data, few folders that are really important and critical, and you want to take snapshot of just those folders. Um, so what you can actually do is under uh, privilege settings, under user, under shared folder, you can actually create a new folder, which is snapshot shared folder, and this is the and this is a folder that will be actually that you will be replicating, or this is the only folder that will be that will be in, that will be included in the snapshot and not the whole volume. So you can actually control. So it's, not, it's just a regular folder, but it's only mainly for snapshot only. Um, I don't have available free space to go with, so I, I'm, unfortunately I can't go show you that right now. But this is this. So in this particular scenario, it's only these folders that will be uh, that you can that, that will be replicated on the onto that particular uh, that will be included in the snapshot. And the the rest of the volume, if you don't have volume snapshot, it won't take a volume. It won't take snapshot of the volume. So again, this is where you control in more detail what you want to snapshot. So the most important data you will be putting in, in this particular folder, let's say for example, if you put it, uh, if you name it a snapshot, so this is your, so all the data within the snapshot folder will be will be replicated in the snapshot. But everything else like your download folder, public folder, any other folder will not be, uh, will not be blocked or so it will not be taken into consideration, it will just be ignored. But only the data in the snapshot folder will be the one that uh, uh, that will be taken into snapshot. So a couple of questions regarding QU firewall is about 
a uh, couple of questions regarding the firewall events. So right now, the detail is only gives you information about uh, like the number of uh, packets that have been uh, blocked. Unfortunately, right now, because this is again, this is a new application that was just released a few months ago. Uh, actually, it was the uh, it was just released in uh, uh, in a regular channel just actually a month ago, but it was beta for about a few months ago. Uh, yeah, right now it doesn't have uh, detailed information about what's being blocked. Uh, we have already have a feature request going in regarding give you, giving you more control and more uh, information about uh, what's being blocked. Uh, so once that new for new application or new update will be released, you will have more control on um, on what's uh, what was blocked and it'll give you more information about what's being blocked. So yes, that that is available. Uh, that that's coming soon. Uh, Hopefully, unfortunately, there's no information right now when it's, now that'll be available. Another question about QU firewall is uh, if you want to temporarily disable the firewall, uh, if it's being blocked, if it's been blocking your local application. So yes, you can control, again, you can just uh, click on open, uh, open QU firewall and just click on the on and off option right here. If you turn it off, it'll just turn off all the, uh, the whole firewall functionality on the QNAP and uh, uh, and it will, it, and then yes, it will allow, the, and then all your application will be allowed. And if you turn to turn it back on, it will go back to the application again. Another application, another question about the about the IP address blocking. Yeah, again, as I mentioned, uh, that this uh, the, the way we block the IP address is through the database. Uh, the database is available on GeoLite 2. so it's again from MaxMind and. Uh, so once we, uh, so yeah, so IP address, so that's where we look at the database of the IP address and we do update the database through that particular, uh, so, so we update that particular database through that particular application or uh, from that particular database and uh, we'll have that information right here. Okay, and the settings, you can also, uh, they, uh, you can also say event logging fre uh, frequency as well and you will let you know at hourly as we can set up event logging frequency based of hours as well. And uh, I think that will be it for today. All right, thank you very much. Thank you everybody for joining us. And again, please keep an eye out for that follow-up uh, email. We'll be sending it out in the next uh, couple of days with, uh, it'll have the, a link to download the, uh, to, to access the recording of today's webinar. And we'll have some other information on there. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we will have a series of webinars throughout the, the year. And keep an eye out for an invite for our next topic uh, coming soon. Till next time, thank you and take care.